Hi, welcome to part two of the antiderivative of e to the x, the exciting conclusion of our lesson. Uh, for this first question, we're asked to solve a differential. Now you remember, hopefully remember, that a differential is just an equation with a derivative in it. That's it. It's just an equation with a derivative in it. What we're being asked to do is to solve it. So how do we solve? We use the anti or the opposite of a derivative, which is the antiderivative. So we're going to use antiderivatives to solve this. Now we haven't seen one of these in this way in a long time, but we'll see these again real shortly, I promise you, when we start solving differentials. Now the first thing we're going to do, we're going to get the dx over. This is my derivative equation, so I'm going to uh, bring the dx over. We call this separation of variables. And now, take the, now to solve it, we're going to take the antiderivative of both sides. Now over here, we just get one y. There's really a plus c there, but that constant, we're just going to bring that over to this one as well. So, a const, so we'll talk more about that in another video. This is going to equal the antiderivative of e to the x minus e to the negative x squared dx. Now you can try u substitution here. It will fail. It won't work. So so what we're going to do is an old algebra trick. We're going to expand the following. e to the x minus e to the negative x times e to the x minus e to the negative x. I'm just going to expand it. This becomes the first one, e to the 2x minus, now be careful, if I take this e to the x times this e to the negative x, I'm going to get, I'm going to add their powers, I get e to the 0. But I wind up with two of them. So I get 2 e to the zeros, and if I do the last, plus e to the negative 2x dx. And I can simplify this just a little bit more. e to the 2x minus 2 plus e to the negative 2x dx. And I am going to go ahead and take this antiderivative. Now I am going to use kind of a shortcut right here. For my first one, I got this 2x right here. I know I'm going to get e to the 2x, but let's see what happens. This becomes u equals 2x, du equals 2, dx. Therefore, dx equals du over 2. That's what I really want. What that's telling me is when I take this antiderivative, I'm going to get e to the u or e to the 2x, but that 2 on bottom tells me we have a 2 on bottom right there. Very quick and easy to do. Minus, we get 2x here, and over here, let's try this one again real quickly. My u is negative 2x, du is negative 2 dx, so dx equals du over negative 2. And that's what I really want. As long as there's no variable here, I don't have to rewrite it necessarily. And it'll work for every single one. So I'm going to get e to the u back, right? My antiderivative e to the u is just e to the u. So I get e to the negative 2x. But I'm going to divide it by negative 2, which makes that a minus 2 plus my original plus my initial constant there, c1. And there's your antiderivative. Very quick and easy. And we're going to take a look at a video later on sometime to show you kind of some kind of shortcuts for these. All right, let's take a look at one more. Uh, we're going to solve a differential again. So let's take a look at one more example here, then we'll be done. Uh, let's let f of x or f prime of x equal sine of x plus e to the 2x. And we're told that at, um, sorry, f of 0 equals one half. Now we've seen this before. They're giving us what's called an initial condition. Now anytime they give us an initial condition, we're going to have to solve for something. So take a look here. We're given the derivative, looking for the value. Ah, given the derivative, I need to find the value. I need the antiderivative. So I am going to apply the antiderivative rule to get f of x. This is just the antiderivative sine of x plus e to the 2x. Don't forget your dx, okay? We will mark that wrong, and so will the AP test. So now when I take the antiderivative, sine is easy. It's negative cosine of x plus there, here's our e to the x. There's our u substitution. u is 2x. du is 2 dx, so dx equals du over 2. And remember, as long as there's no variable there, it's easy breezy. I am going to get my antiderivative e to the x, which is just e to the 2x this time, but over the 2 right there, plus c1. So there's my antiderivative for now. 
but now we're being asked to find C1. That's where my initial condition comes in, 0, 1 half. I plug it in into my function, I get 1 half equals negative cosine of 0 plus, this becomes e to the 0 over 2 plus c1. Simplifying, 1 half equals, that's negative 1 plus 1 half plus c1. Easy breezy, 1 halves cancel, c1 equals 1. I can just plug that back in. f of x equals negative cosine of x plus e to the 2x over 2 plus 1. And there's our answer. All right, so uh, that concludes our lesson for today. I uh, hope you guys had fun. I did. It was an exciting conclusion there. I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye.